What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back again for the reaction and today's a great, wonderful, beautiful, amazing day and do you know why? I'll tell you why, because of a Germany day. Geography, now Germany. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such... <laughs> that was a cool rhyme. Such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? I it's love time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little luck. So close to the UK. I, it, still, it still annoys me that I have never been to Germany. It still annoys me. It really does. You're huge. It's a big country. Luxembourg with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, okay. including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now, we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbon railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Konstanz is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately okay. across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they... Oh, that's weird. You still think it's weird the way that they used to, like, divide up borders, divide up countries, and it really has a lot to do with wars and things in the past and the reason why countries are divided up the way, are, the, the way they are. And obviously the fall of Berlin Wall and, oh... They All split sorts. the island of Uzedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Vorpommern will be different from Saarland. This all okay. has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms. This guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic <laughs> Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussian. Russia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism yeah. surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game, we gotta scramble for some colonies, and that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also- Wow. Which this countries? game, we gotta scramble for some colonies, and that's how all of these countries- all these countries, so that's like, I don't know, somewhere near South Africa, somewhere near like Kenya maybe, I don't know. And maybe that's like, is that Nigeria or Ghana? I don't know, somewhere in West Africa. Then you've got Papua New Guinea area, I think maybe. And then is that like, oh, so that's Germany. <laughs> wow at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, okay. you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. the monarchy ends, Treaty of yeah. Versailles, they lose land, Nazis come in, World War Two. Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are okay. generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the blocky Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite wow. image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the what? funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top yeah. notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Vic I need to see all of these historical buildings. I really do. 
That's amazing. That's beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The Berlin Berlin Victory Column. I don't think I've ever seen that before, which is weird because it's incredible. It's just as nice as... Well, it's nicer than Big Ben. <laughs> it's nicer than a lot of uh, monuments, but I've never seen it before. And Victory Column and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has... Really? That does look like a Disney... That's incredible. Wow. That is stunning. No wonder they use that. Look, that looks like every Disney castle. That's it. In any Disney princess movie. That's beautiful. Wow. Over the most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody wow. knows about the Autobahn, the highway system, in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. No and it's like that limit. for a huge portion of the roadway. And That's no wonder, insane. considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest wow. mountain, Suchspitze, located right along... Suchspitze the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland, and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture of course happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is by the way kind of like Europe's tornado alley, due to its position sandwiched between the arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric War zone in the summer. There are more. Do you get tornadoes? Tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of. I did not know that. Is that true? Let me know in the comment section if you've ever experienced a tornado in Germany and if it is, like you said, very common. Um, I don't. It happens very, very rarely in the UK. I mean, we're a little island. It just doesn't happen. We don't have any extreme weather, weather to be honest, apart from some floods every now and again. But. Um, is that true? You guys deal with, like, tornadoes quite a lot. Let me know. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans abso freaking lutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or... I used to try bread there. You did, how, would you, how would I get through all your bread? <laughs> 300. Small bun or brochen of bread. Ask to gluten free? Nine! Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. Mm. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside wow. schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer ra But this looks so good. The yum, yum. The way you guys make like sausages in so many varieties of ways, and you're like, Oh, that looks so good. Even though, like, sorry, it's like vegans. Schnitzels, Rouladen, <laughs> Sauerbraten, Schweinsachse, and at a big party, you might so find good. Spanfaka. I know that's... Sorry, vegans. How do I cover the face? I'm sorry. But that does look delicious. I mean, I'm sorry. That just looks... I know for a fact that is incredible. <sighs> Beer reigns supreme all over and as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic. What's better than pig and has beer? No problem with public intoxication and Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which, by the way, follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest wow. continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously, and for the past two decades, has been going on a major green. Revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen it. Sustainability, we love to see it. Well done, Germany. <laughs> Obviously, the rest of Europe should look to you guys if you've you know, I don't understand why we don't have more solar panels in the UK as well. We have a lot of wind turbines, but I don't know how much that powers the homes and just facilities around the UK. I don't really know much about that. But we have a lot of wind turbines, but we could do a lot more. We could do better, especially with solar power.
seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier wow. and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Oh, Companies we've all it. heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Nivea. Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma! <laughs> yeah, that situation's so funny that the brothers that split up, like, I just, yeah, that's wild. It's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil, remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains, all that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth wow. largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without okay. a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany is- Really? It's the second most popular migration destination? I didn't know that, but I, I'm beginning to realize as I watch more things about Germany, why it's so popular. Um, everything I've seen so far, I'm like, wow, I really like this country. <laughs> this country that is literally only across the water from where I'm from that I've never been to. Where have I been? Where have I been? I don't think we promote your country enough in England. I just don't think the UK, we just don't. We just don't. You just... You, you, we just don't. There's not like when we go to a, a a to book a holiday. I don't think Germany is a destination that comes up enough. Maybe because it's not a hot country, and we like to go to hot countries. But we definitely need to promote our European neighbours more, especially Germany. Like you guys need to be. Germany experiences more. a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now when it comes to language, things nice. get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch or High German, Hochdeutsch. which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic based language used along the Czech Polish border and Plattdeutsch okay. or Low German which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions though Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the yeah. west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle wow. Germany was the <laughs> part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. North Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being okay. kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting... It's interesting that Northern Germany has seen to be a bit more, more reserved. And I guess that's closer to your neighbours in the north, the Scandinavian people who also like to be very reserved. There's something about being in the north and being reserved. I don't know what it is and people in the south being a bit more outgoing. What is that? Is it because it's colder? I don't know. I just, I've, I've just, I'm seeing a theme throughout Europe as I learn about different countries in Europe that the northern people, whatever country you're in, tend to be the reserved, quieter types. Hmm. Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have wow. Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, half timber, beer houses, and cuckoo clocks. For the record, <laughs> Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. <laughs> Speaking of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drank too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. 
Interesting. So you have stereotypes within your countries about each other. It's just like in the UK, like we literally think that of different parts of the UK, like Scousers in the Northwest are this way, Man- Manx are like this, Liverpoolians are like this, Londoners are like this. Like we just divide the country up and have like different stereotypes for different areas. So totally get that. Um, I got told in my comment section the other day that I sound like <laughs> someone who's from South Germany. If a German was speaking English, I sound more like someone from South Germany. Someone told me that, and I don't know what that means, but I'm going to f- watch a video on dialects and accents in Germany and see which one I sound the most like, if that makes sense. I don't know. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen. But in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss. And in Rhineland, Tschüss. you might say Ayus. And there's so many Ayus. compound words that get really long wow. and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungsüberwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. <coughs> this is because many words are Mertudig, or ambiguous words, that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this. Really? Yeah. What did I watch? I watched something the other day as well that did say that you guys dub a lot of stuff. Like other countries don't tend to dub. Like other European countries, when they have a English, something in English, they tend to watch it in English. But you guys, if I'm... I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if it's correct that you dub a lot of your shows and TV shows and stuff. I hate Some dubbing. don't, but either way... I really hate dubbing. When I watch something, it has to be in subtitles because I like to hear the, the original actor and how they portrayed something. Because um, I watch a lot of international stuff. Um, at some point, I'll watch, I'll watch some international Germany stuff and see... Well, and I will use the subtitles because I will not have dubbing. When the mouth moves and the... the, the and the, the... I don't know what I'm doing there. But when the mouth's moving and the, 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 the words are not matching the mouth movements, it's so off-putting. Let me know what you think to that and let me know what you prefer. Either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. It, are you guys more religious than the Brits? I think you might be. 60% was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until Mm. the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder, or economic wonder, happened, to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism (coughs) alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school and Hapskula, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany. Germany. Well done. Well done. That I wish we had in the UK. You have three separate categories of schools for, for, for young people who show promise in a certain field or industry or have a have a aptitude for a certain skill instead of plonking all children into one generic system i salute you 
I salute you because that is that is the best way to be. That is the best way to be people because not all kids are the same and not all kids learn in, say, an academic way. Some kids need vocational skills. Some kids really thrive using their hands rather than sitting down and reading a textbook and re regurgitating text and information back at somebody you know not all kids learn in the same way so I'm, I'm very impressed I'm very impressed I'm very impressed Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third really? in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that's- That is awesome. Oh wow, you look after the musicians as well. Well done, well done. That's awesome, 50%. That's good. So kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that, which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. Wow. Okay. Um, that's similar to the UK, to be honest. That is similar to the UK. It's interesting, it's interesting that our Germanic cousins are quite similar in that sense. Because I think patriotism is kind of looked, not looked down upon, but yeah, we're not, I don't know. Like, I think it stems from, you know, football hooliganism, hooliganism. <laughs> did I say that right? Just like waving your flag around is associated with being racist. It just is. It just is. And I think it is a bit sad because it shouldn't be that way. We should be proud to be proud of our countries and wave a flag and put a flag outside if you wanted to. But unfortunately, flags throughout history have been used to persecute people. Um, some flags more than others. Um, and I think... Two of, the, two of the flags that are being used the most to persecute people, I think the German flag and I think, well, maybe not the new German flag, it was a different type of flag before, um, but especially our flag, the, 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 the St. George's Cross and the, um, the two flags that we have, the English flag and the flag of the UK, sometimes gets used to treat people badly. So... There's kind of a look, you look down upon, it's not classy if you wear your flag or you put your flag outside your homes. If you tend to go to uh, areas in England that are lower, lower demographic or poorer people, they tend to have English flags outside their homes. So it's also looked at as being maybe unclassy um, and being associated with a particular demographic in England. Let me know in the comment section if it's the same in Germany. Is is the German flag associated with lower demographics, poorer people? Let me know. Might not. Might, might just be a, a British thing, but let me know. You monster! They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items that to flag. own in Germany. And they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürr, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American, Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Sorry, this is not associated to the list of people that he's talking about, but what he said before then about the rule that you guys can't speak about, I mean, you have to be truthful about the past and about the past atrocities with, I'm guessing, the World War and what happened to the Jews, all that type of stuff, and that you guys are very honest and transparent about that. I think that's really, really good. Um, I wish the UK also were the same because I don't think the UK have acknowledged their part 
in the World War, and particularly, particularly, I'm not being able, I can't get my words out today, um, their part in, like, the Atlantic slave trade, you know, and their part in colonialism, like, it's literally, that was a long time ago, we don't speak about that. That is very much the stance that the UK takes, and it's not, it's not a good stance. I think it's important to remember things, it's important to acknowledge, not just, not just remember, but acknowledge these things happened, and these things were bad things, and we shouldn't repeat the bad things of the past. Um, it shouldn't be like, oh, we don't speak about it, because that's just, that's just not the way to deal with things. So I'm impressed that Germany, that you guys are more transparent, and you, you speak about, you remember, and you, you do speak about the things that happened in the past, um, because that's how we learn. So well done. Michael Shoemaker, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you wow. can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. So you can Germany right knows away. how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony Namibia. way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported okay. both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, Woohoo! Even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South okay. Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan wow. allowed the US to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. I know the UK had a big thing to do with the Israel situation. He is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may mm. not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is... All their neighbours. Are we on there? I don't think we are. <laughs> Looking at the shapes of the countries. Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional <coughs> alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful, flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistics work in conclusion although it's a shame that we're not closer right i think i think it's just because of the past right it, it, unfortunately yeah the war probably broke us apart as countries that were probably pretty close in the past <laughs> i mean we speak germanic languages uh, we have a hell of a lot in common um our royal family is pretty much German, has like German heritage. If it wasn't for that period of time, I think we would probably be, be best friends as countries. Like we would be closer. Um, it's kind of sad, isn't it? It's kind of sad, but you st we still have shared history, even if we're not considered a best friend. Yeah. Although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to... Inter 
Ghana is coming up. Ghana. So it is, you did have, I was looking on the map and I thought it was Ghana that you had a, a tie to as Germany. Guys, that was really, really interesting. That was very, very interesting. Like I said, I need to visit Germany soon, like yesterday. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.